Hello everyone, I am Vernon Smith. We are excited today to have with us one of the pioneers of conversion optimization. Mr. Khaled Saleh is the president and co-founder of Invesp, a leading conversion optimization company. He is the author of Conversion Optimization, The Art and Science of Converting Prospects into Customers. Khaled, will, Khaled speaks regularly at industry conferences such as eMetrics, SMX, SES, and the DMA. He is also the architect for the first conversion optimization software. Khaled will share with us the process that helped invest deliver incredible conversion results for his customers. With that, I will hand it over to Khaled. Thank you, Vernon, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Khaled Sadeh. I'm the president and co-founder of Invesp, a conversion optimization firm. I'm excited today to share with you a unique and uh, proven methodology that helped 50 of our customers achieve a 65% average uplift in sales over the past 12 months. Uh, what is unique uh, about the process is it has been deployed on many different types of websites, uh, e-commerce, lead generation, B2B, B2C, uh, content and subscription-based websites, and affiliate type websites. Uh, second, uh, this process has been deployed in many different verticals all across the board. Uh, finally, in each one of those cases, the process produced sustainable and significant increases in online sales. Uh, the presentation is uh, scheduled to run for about uh, 25 minutes. Um, also, we have a special offer for our webcast attendees, uh, so please uh, stick around. We'll have that at the end of the presentation. Um, uh, quickly about, uh, quickly about uh, Invesp, we founded the company about five years ago in 2006. The leadership team uh, in Invesp are pioneers in usability, e-commerce, and conversion optimization. Uh, we led the design and implementation of some of the larger companies for some of the larger companies in North America, including Motorola, American Express, Citrix, to name few, and uh, you see on the screen a few of our customers. If you think about your, diff about your website design, and as you go through the process of designing a new website, or if you have an existing website and you take your website and you ask yourself the question, how do I know that my current design, my current visitor flow through my website, my current content and copy that I have on the website, how do I know is generating the most sales for me? That can be a tough question. Because if you think about all the different pages on your website, there are just so many different design uh, possibilities, there are many different visitor flow, there are different alternatives of copy and content that you can use. Ultimately, like I said, the question is which page design or process flow or copy generated more sales. So let's start by this, uh, by this example. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you three different possible designs and I'm going to ask you which design you believe generated more sales. So here's design A, here's design B, and here is design C. Those designs, by the way, are designs for a product page on e-commerce website for one of our customers, RHD Japan. They are a large supplier of JDM Auto Parts. Let me kind of go through some of the differences between those different designs. So in design B, what you will notice over here is we had moved the Add to Cart button a little higher compared to design A. So as you see over here, Add to Cart was a little lower than design B. Also in design A, what you notice is that the product description, specifics, and compatibility for the product was listed in a tabbed fashion in design A. In design B, what we opted to do is list those same information in a non-tabbed fashion, so it's, uh, it's linearly displayed. In design C, what we did, you also move the add to cart a little higher compared to design A, but we kept the tabbed fashion for displaying the product information. I'm going to give you about five seconds to examine those three different designs. And the question to you is, which design do you think generated more sales? Even probably more important, why do you think design, a particular design would generate more sales? So do you think it's design A, B, or C? And let's look at the right answer. If you had picked design B, and design B is, as you notice over here, the add to cart has moved up 
and the product information, the description, the product specs, and the compatibility info is still displayed in a tabbed fashion. As you see over here, um, just compared to design A, this design generated a 39.5% uplift in sales. That is a significant increase in online sales. So if you had picked that design, you definitely should ask for a raise. However, if you pick design B, you probably should ask for a bigger raise because design B generated a 56% uh, uplift in sales. What's the difference between design A and B? If you recall, in design B, we had moved the add to cart above and we also went for the linear fashion in displaying the product description, product specs, compatibility info. What's important over here to notice is well, it's, it's nice to figure out which design after the fact, which design generated more sales, but how do I know? What process should I follow to really uh, come to a higher probability of success in picking the right design before I even deploy those designs on my, on my website? Let's go to another pop quiz. And what I'm going to show you over here is an example for a cart page for an e-commerce website. And let's see kind of the differences between the two different between the two different designs. And design A, what you will see over here next to the cart page, is there's what we call an assurance center. It tells customers that we offer a money back guarantee, 100% price match. Design B, on the other hand, is just the cart without the assurance center added to it which design do you believe generated more sales? Is it design A or is it design B? <clears throat> and the winning design is actually design A with a 32% uplift in conversion. Let me kind of give you a little bit of background about, uh, about what had happened over here. This particular e-commerce customer came to us with a fairly high abandonment rate close to the 78%. And that is very typical for e-commerce websites. Uh, when we work with e-commerce companies and look at we look at their checkout process abandonment rate, typical rates are anywhere between 45 to about 85% abandonment rate. What does an 85% abandonment rate mean? It means that for every 100 customers who start the checkout process, only 15 of them will complete the, complete the checkout process. 85 visitors or potential customers will actually opt to abandon your website, leave your website without ever completing the order. So that is really a significant, significant number. In this particular customer case, the close to 78% abandonment rate, we actually, when we analyzed their checkout process, examined it caref carefully, conducted a usability study where we brought some of the uh, some of the people who actually shop on their website, talked to them, and the biggest issue that really popped up popped at us as we as we talked to potential customers is that they said, "Well, we like the site, but we're not sure if we are actually going to do business with them because we feel that we can buy the same item from other competitors from an offline store at a cheaper price." When we added, when we understood the fear and the concern that the visitor had, we came to our customer and we told them, well, we can resolve this issue by adding an assurance center to really deal with some of those fears, uncertainties, and doubts that visitors had. So we added this assurance center, and as you see, uh, the result is a 32% uplift in conversions. This was actually so successful, it was featured in the Internet Retailer magazine. Now, Give you another card page design. Um, the VP of e-commerce on this website actually read the, the article that was featured in the internet retailer and came to us and said, hey, we also suffer from, uh, suffer from a high abandonment rate on our cart and checkout process. Why don't we add an assurance center? So as you see over here in design A, there's the assurance center. Design B is the original design for the cart page. So the question to you again, which design do you believe generated more sales? Is it design A with the Assurance Center or is it design B, the original design without the Assurance Center? We'll give you a couple of minutes to examine. Design A resulted in a 3.1 less sales for customer and for this customer in this particular case. And this is extremely important points. Um, uh, th th there's lots of pieces of information that we'll share with you throughout the, uh, throughout the webinar, but this is a very important point that you probably should keep in mind. 
what's what our customer discovered over here is that what works for one website may or may not work for your website uh, what I always tell our customers when I speak at conferences is best practices are good in theory but difficult in practice and best practices are exactly what they are they are general best practices they may or may not fit for your own website let's go to the last pop quiz of the of the day what you see over here is two different landing pages uh, for PGI uh, connect a uh, they uh, provide efax services and communication services for most of the fortune 500 companies what you see over here is a landing page for their fax to mail surf, uh, service offering and the question to you is which design do you believe generated more sales is it design a or is it design B and the right answer is design A generated a 238% uplift in conversions. In this case, by the way, the conversion was a lead generation type conversion where customers were filling information, um, then the, the sales team would contact them and close the sale offline. What's important though, as I hope that you see from the different examples that we gave, what's the important question is to ask, well, I have all these possible designs, I have the different copy that I can deploy on my website, I have different visitor flow through the website, how do I know which of these possibilities, which, which of these designs would actually generate the most sales from before I actually go through the trouble of creating those different designs and deploying them on, on my website? And that is impor an important question because it takes time and effort and resources to deploy and create each one of those designs. So making the right decision becomes really critical. Now, let's take an example of I have three possible different designs for a particular product, and this is a hypothet hypothetical product. How do I know which one of those designs actually will generate more sales for me? The way we answer this question typically, and this is really also it does not get into the meat of our presentation, but kind of to give you a quick background if you're not familiar with testing software. The way we answer this question is if you take an original design for a particular page and this particular design is receiving a certain number of visitors let's say you have 10,000 visitors coming to a particular page on your website we use software to split the number of visitors between the different designs alternatives between the different visitor flows or copy of the website and then we compare the number of orders that each one of those designs generated for us by doing so we will be able to really say with with certainty with high confidence that a particular design generated more orders for us there are there are many different testing software packages available in the marketplace um, they, they really have flooded the marketplace at this point in time which software package you use does not really matter because the real question is how do I know that my team is designing the winning design in the first place, creating the winning visitor flow, creating or picking the right copy in the first place? The actual process of testing is secondary to choosing the right design or coming up with the right, with the right process flow. Here's an example from uh, a free software that's available in the marketplace, Google Website Optimizer. And as you see in this particular case, we had two different designs that we're testing, original versus a combination, uh, one variation. And what's significant about, about this is the software shows you that we had, with the combination one, a 99.2% uh, confidence that this design would generate higher conversions or higher sales. That is a high level of certainty. I know with a 99% confidence or certainty that this design will win. Also, it shows us that this particular design generated 39.9% uplifts in conversion rates. We go back to saying choosing the right design process flow should not be a random guessing game. You should follow a process, you should follow a methodology, and that's really uh, the second portion of my presentation. That's what we're going to cover is the how do I get to that, to that point. The process of conversion optimization, the process of creating a design that converts your website visitors into actual customers, involves three important pillars. First, you need to plan where to start. 
Um, you have many alternatives, many possibilities on your website to optimize, to change the design. You can change if you're on an e-commerce website. You can change the design of your main homepage, your product pages, your category pages, your checkout process. If you are a content website, you can change this endless number of possibilities between the main homepage, the different contents, the articles that you're offering on your website, or maybe the subscription area of your website. Ultimately, pick in the right place. Each one of those places is, is critical. Each one of those places, any modification to it will involve time and money. So we want to invest our time and money to see the highest ROI. So that's the first P of conversion optimization. The second P, you need to implement the changes on that particular process, on that particular page, using a true framework and methodology. The last, the last elements of conversion optimization, you need to improve in a very iterative process. We believe that conversion optimization is, uh, is not a step to be taken, but rather a process to be followed. So it is continuous and followed correctly and conducted correctly. You will see sustainable, repeatable increases in your online sales. <clears throat> The process that I'm going to share with you actually is covered uh, by our book on conversion optimization that's available in different bookstores, on, also on Amazon.com, different online retailers. It has been really featured um, in many different conferences and also by um, such as Internet Retailer, SMX, SES, DMA. Uh, so we, we've been speaking and sharing this process with, uh, with uh, our, our, our friends and, and, and the industry for the last five years. Now, what I'm going to share with you is the conversion framework. The principles of the conversion framework are there are six principles in the conversion framework that deal directly with how a visitor interacts with your website. Those principles tell you whether a visitor is persuaded by your message, they decide to transact with you, give you hand out their information to you, give you their credit card information, or they decide to say, you know what, I don't want to deal with, the, with, with this website, I'm going to leave them and I'm going to exit. Let's quickly cover the principles of the conversion framework. The first principle of the conversion framework is understanding your website visitors. If you think about yourself, if you think about um, your, your spouse or your significant other, there are different types of personas of visitors that come to your website. There are people like me uh, who are very spontaneous. They come to the website and they just want to place an order quickly and move on. There are other people who are a lot more caring. You know, they want to understand, well, what ha who else have you helped? They want to read the testimonials on your website. There are people who are very aggressive. Uh, research shows us that aggressive type personas, um, really, they, they constitute about 7% of the population. And those are really uh, the, the questions that they ask and the way they interact with your website. They, they come to the website and they say, what can you do for me? They are focused on their on their selves. There are people who are very methodical. They are probably the highest percentage of the population, close to anywhere between 40 to 45 percent. Methodical type personas want to understand the process, the methodology of uh, that you follow. Why should I? Why should I? What process do you follow to ensure that I, you know, I will receive the best uh, the best orders, the best customer service? The second element of the conversion framework is trust. If I do not trust you, I will not transact with you. Now, trust is a very general term and it has many different components under it. For example, how do you create a website design that through its value proposition, through continuity and congruency, really instill, instills that trust and confidence in your website visitors? The third element of the conversion framework is the buying stages. Not everybody who comes to your website is ready to transact. Some people are early in the buying stages process. They are merely discovering their need. Others might be in midway through the buying process. They are maybe in the comparing alternatives or doing research stage. Others might be in the, uh, in the uh, action stage. They are ready to place an order. And each one of those buying stages require you to have different copy, different design to really meet the needs of those visitors. You add on top of these, you have also to keep in mind that somebody who is spontaneous, who is in the research phase, will handle or want to deal with your website a lot differently than somebody who is, for example, caring in the action stage. So you need to be able to create a design that meets the needs of all those different visitors coming in the different buying stages. You also need to deal with the 
fourth element of the conversion framework, FUDs, fears, uncertainties, and doubts. We all come with them. Is this a legitimate business that we, is this a legitimate website or business that we I should transact with? Can I really trust them to hand out my credit card information or my email address to them? And if you think about it, as visitors go through different stages, different pages on your website, they will have different fears, uncertainties, and doubts. When I land on an e-commerce website, for example, the first question I'm going to say, the first fear I have, well, is this a good place to do business with? As I look at their product pages, now I have some level of uncertainty. Is this the right product for me? As I start the checkout process, I have some doubts. Are they going to deliver on time? Am I going to regret my decision? So all these different questions need to be addressed for different types of personas coming in different buying stages. The fifth element of the conversion framework is incentives. You incentivize, incentivize visitors to transact with you using different means by offering different ways to really encourage people to say, you know what, yes, I am ready to place an order. This is a good place to transact with. This is, you, you persuade visitors to, to convert on your website. Now, what we see from our research is you can have the same incentive. Let's say you're offering a 10% discount, but the way you present that incentives, where you present it, the way you word the incentive will have a huge impact on your visitors and their, uh, their pers the persuasion, uh, your ability to persuade them to convert into actual customers. The last element of the conversion framework is engagement. You need to engage visitors in order for you to stand out from the crowd. If you think about the different lead generation type websites, content websites, e-commerce websites, lots of times what you find out is most of them are copies of each other. They all offer the same information. Sometimes they offer the same product or service and it's difficult to distinguish them. The question to you as somebody who has something to offer, how do you engage your visitors? Not only to capture their business, but also for them to come back to your website to refer their friends, coworkers, and family to your website. Those six principles of the conversion framework really translate in our practice into about 350 different elements that you should evaluate on your website. And when you evaluate each page from those 350 different elements, you will be able to say, well, here is the winning design. Here is what I should change on a particular, uh, on a particular page. Let me give you a particular example from one of our customers and I'll take their product page and we'll run you through a simple uh, fairly simple, straightforward analysis. Typical analysis is a lot more complex, but this will give you some flavor for the analysis that needs to take place to come up with the new designs, with, with different designs, different process flows, different uh, copy that you should be using on your website. <clears throat> what you will notice over here when we looked at this product page, for this spontaneous top persona, somebody who is ready to act, you need to have your call to actions buttons really available to them right away. And as you see over here, the call to action add to cart was below the fold. It was not apparent. You ex uh, the, the original design expected visitors to scroll down to find the add to, uh, the add to cart button. Also, in this case, the you know typical e-commerce website product page did not really address the caring type personas, and those are about 30% of the population. They really care about testimonials. They would like to understand. Um, they would like to understand who else have you done business with? Why should I do business with you? The second element is trust and confidence. Again, you know, this website did not really deal with, the, had no unique value proposition. Also, another problem that the website dealt with is the way the shopping experience and the way the, some of the items were offered really caused some confusion for, for visitors. So we actually had to go to our customer and rethink how the products are, are displayed. Um, they had, for example, in, in this particular case, they had one page for all types of different sizes, queen, king, and we changed some of that around. And I'll show you in a little bit how the, the new design. This web page, if you can think about it from the buying, buying stage perspective, was really focused on the action stage. It did not address visitors who are early in the process, visitors who are doing research. Is this the right bet for me? Is this the right manufacturer that, should, that I should choose? This page also increased funds, the fears, uncertainties, and doubts, and the way that the, uh, the drop downs had worked was not very, uh, did not really, uh, was not, uh, did not follow common sense. Also, one of the things that uh, our customer did is they had a, an incentive displayed on the page. However, that incentive says call for additional discount actually caused many of the visitors to pick up the phone and call and not convert online. That 
and, and resulted in really a large call volume, which cost the customer a lot, uh, a lot more money. Again, we go back to the incentive issue. Our question, the, the question to the conversion optimization team was, can we reward this in incentive so we can generate more sales for our customer online? Finally, there was nothing engaging about this page. It presented this single picture for the visitor, and that's it. The visitor could not envision themselves in this bed and how it will fit on their, in their own particular case. What we do over here, what we did is this quick analysis using the conversion framework of this particular page, and then we're able to, following each one of those elements, to come up with a new design. We make small changes to the page, and then we'll be able to determine the, this, this is how we come up with the new design for the particular, particular page. Now, here's the new design, and let's kind of address quickly some of the things that we did based on the previous uh, previous uh, feedback that we've got. So as you see over here, the Add to Car button had moved up. Also, the testimonials, is difficult to see them over here, are now apparent on the product page. What you will see is we've changed actually the way the products are structured on the website to really eliminate the trust and confidence issues that we've discovered. Also for the buying stages now, we've asked our customer to add some of the manufacturer details, uh, finish the room, ways for people to really be engaged um, and understand, well, is this a right fit for me? With FUDs, we actually changed the way the drop downs work. We also changed how the incentive has been worded. For now, it says for purchases over 1500, call for additional discounts. And we actually, if you go to the uh, to the website right now, there's different ways that we've dealt with this um, and that's also resulted in significant increases in conversion rates. Finally, engagement, you see now there are different pictures so you can picture this bed and see it in, you know, in, in your own, uh, from different angles to see if it really fits within your own specific needs. Let's compare the two different designs. So here's design A, the original design, and here is design B. Which design do you believe generated more sales? Of course, as you can imagine, design B, the new design, resulted in a 109%, 109% increase in conversion rates. My point is, by following the process, and that's what's really important, the most important takeaway from this webinar, uh, is if you follow the process and you follow the methodology in a very careful manner, you will see significant repeatable increases in conversion rates. Finally, let me kind of quickly run you through some of the facts about uh, about Invest. But like I mentioned, we were founded in 2000, uh, 2006, so we've been around for five years, solely focused on conversion optimization. Uh, we don't do SEO, we don't do anything else besides conversion optimization. Uh, our customers are spread um, all across the globe, really, at this point. We have customers um, all uh, across North America, the UK, Australia, Denmark, and the, and the Middle East. Uh, the average uplift that we've developed, uh, de uh, delivered for our customers is 65% um, using the first of its kind uh, unique uh, software conversion optimization uh, software. Um, the special offer that I would like to conclude the webinar with, you can receive a 45 minutes uh, evaluation of your website's conversion opportunities. We'll take a look at your analytics and really assess whether um, how much money you are leaving on the table and if there are conversion optimization opportunities uh, for you. Uh, in order for you to qualify for that offer, please um, send an email to convert at invest dot com convert at invest dot com uh, the only uh, the only condition to qualify for this is you need to have a minimum of 200 conversion transactions per month so if you're an e-commerce website you need to have a minimum of 200 uh, transactions if you are a lead generation type website you need to have 200 uh, for example forms filled on your website per month uh, i hope that you guys have uh, enjoyed this um, like i mentioned our book on conversion optimization um, titled Conversion Optimization is available on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, and your local bookstores. And you can also check out our uh, our blog. It has many tips on conversion optimization. Thank you again.